everyone, welcome to The Daily. Today is Wednesday, January 9th. Greg Lawless alongside Simon Borg. It is a big day around Major League Soccer today. That's because the schedule is out. No more of those little Twitter memes of the MLS schedule is late because blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Simon? Yeah. What's a, a game on the schedule that you're really looking forward to? I'm going to circle that Real Salt Lake, New York Red Bulls game. And the return to Salt Lake of Hamison Olave and uh, Fabian Espindola, two fixtures in Salt Lake yeah. uh, over the years. And they get to go home and the emotion will be flowing. I love those kind of emotional games. I think that's going to be good. I also am looking forward to the Chivas LA game. The first time that Chelis, Chelis. goes up against <laughs> the Los Angeles Galaxy and Bruce Arena. I think there's going to be some great stuff in the build up to that one. One. And also we get to see a little bit about what this Chivas USA team is right. going to be all about in the end. Check out MLSsoccer.com slash schedule to find out where your team is playing their entire season this year in 2013. Well, the Eastern Conference started moving some players. Some of it's rumored, some of it is confirmed. We're going to start with Philadelphia Union where Carlos Valdez, a, really a, a local hero for many of the fans down for the Union, there's a report out there that he is going to be loaned to Santa Fe down in Colombia. Simon, what's this move all about and is this something the Union really want to do? You know, it's interesting what the Union are doing. I kind of like it. This is the second player they're going to send on loan. Remember, Zach Pfeffer out on loan with Hoffenheim in Germany. And it, look, there's no reason to send Valdez on loan. Uh, he is the captain of your team. He is, a, he is a valuable man. He's an all-star in MLS, valued central defender. Why send him? Well, what they're doing here clearly is they're looking to value, to, to, to allow one of their assets to increase in value, um, and they're looking to uh, possibly move him on in the future. That's the, only re that's the only rationale here, is that he goes to Colombia, sees time with the Colombian national team, and is more valuable in the international transfer market, and then they can make a move. Uh, bottom line, Greg, Players are interchangeable in, in the world. There's a constant cycle. Philadelphia has embraced that and are sending guys out. And I think it's important to also note that Philadelphia have some options at center back already. Yep. Don't forget they picked up Jeff Park in the offseason. Yep. Obviously a starter for that team. Plus, Amubia Kugo has turned into a great player. And Bakari Sumari, really not healthy last year. If he's healthy, he's certainly a viable option in the center of the defense. A little bit further south from Philadelphia and DC United, they have announced a new player, Rafael, a young designated player who signed on loan from Bahia down in Brazil. What do we know about this guy? So we were Googling and, and <laughs> looking for YouTube clips. And look, based on what we saw on YouTube, he, he looks to, see, to have the MLS profile in terms of his size, mm -hmm. um, his athleticism, what looks like his athleticism. Look, DC need to get this one right. Uh, they tried Hamdi Salihi at forward, didn't work out. He is a designated player, Rafael. Mm -hmm. So they're, again, a big risk up top. Uh, but again, I think it's a, it's a good one because he's younger. It's a loan, so there's not much risk. Uh, so this could work out. This, it looks like a deal that could work out for DC. Well, he's 20 years old. He did uh, participate in the Pan American Games with the Brazilian national team, so a guy with international experience as well. We'll see how he turns out up top for DC United in 2013. <laughs> All right, last up, the 2013 MLS Combine will kick off on Friday with some matches. We're all going to be heading down to Fort Lauderdale for this on Thursday when the players will also arrive. Most of the coaches and agents, of course, will also be arriving in Fort Lauderdale for this. It's basically five days, three days of games, lots of talk, some trades I'm sure will happen, lots of rumors will fly around. We're going to be getting ready here on MLSsoccer.com by releasing some draft previews for some clubs. On Wednesday, it's Portland and New England. Yep. Simon, what are, we, what are those two clubs expecting? Well, what's interesting, Portland don't have a pick in the Super Draft as it stands right now. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if they make a move to maybe get in the mix. They will be up here again in the Supplemental Draft next week. But as far as the Super Draft, where the cream of the crop is picked, they're not there. Um, as far as New England, um, they have an interesting selection at four. Um, now, center back is an area where they need to upgrade. Mm -hmm. And there are several very good center backs in this draft. So check out the preview. We'll give you uh, our take take on the one or two guys that they can probably find at uh, number four. Remember, uh, P Walker Zimmerman and Andrew Farrell, two potential center backs in MLS that probably might go one and two. That's what everyone's right. saying. So who's left at four for New England? We'll or if that. maybe one of those teams above them does not go with a center back, maybe they don't need yeah. to in that one. Don't forget, the Combine starts on Friday. We'll have full coverage on MLSsoccer.com. That's it for today, and we'll talk to you from Florida tomorrow.